Hey guys, Ivan here, and we are starting this video with a Ronnie Coleman update who seems to have gained quite a bit of body fat. So, I don't think I ever saw him this chubby, especially his midsection, it got a little bit blown out of proportions. I haven't really seen it this way before, and also the, the arms, they were usually quite veiny, there was a lot of vascularity going on through those arms, now it's not really ex like that. But as you can see right here, uh, he's doing some leg curls, so he's training his legs. Until recently, he wasn't even able to walk. As he says right here, he's currently on a vacation and also he's doing stem cell treatment, which is basically what helped him recover quite a bit. So if you guys remember the Joe Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan actually told him about this thing, and I guess that's where he heard about that and he took Joe's advice and he started doing it. And it seems like he's doing much better, I mean, he's able to train the legs, and also he looks kind of healthier in the face, and also he, I think he said somewhere that he has much less pain in the back. And I think you can see it in his face, he does look happier, he does look healthier in the face, in, in the body, I don't know, because he gained quite a bit of fat, uh, is it fat, maybe just a bubble gut, I don't know, but he does look a little bit blurry. I mean, the arms usually would look super, super uh, vascular. Now they're not really that vascular. They look a little bit, uh, a little bit blurry. There is a film of, of water and fat, whatever, and the gut got really bad. So he gained a lot, but he does look happy and healthy. So I'm definitely very glad for Ronnie. A few weeks ago, I made another Ronnie Coleman update video and I thought this was his recent physique. He didn't say anything about it being an older photo, so I thought he's this lean, this muscular and that his face got so much leaner and he looks younger and fresher and everything, but it seems like this is an older photo. So, <laughs> sorry guys, it's a, yeah, he didn't say anything. I didn't know, but based on the previous video, I think this is an older photo actually. But he did usually look slimmer and leaner, like here, you can see. He was definitely smaller, his face looked more sucked in, uh, more lean, and also his arms, legs as well. He would usually look uh, slimmer and definitely leaner, but now it seems like he gained some fat. I mean, Ronnie Coleman is long retired. Cut him a break, right? He hasn't been competing in so long, who cares what he looks like right now. But this is the best bodybuilder of all time by far. So I think it's very interesting to show you these kind of updates of him, what he looks like right now. I mean, I choose the stories for my channel based on how much I am amazed and captivated by the things I see. And when I saw this, I thought, wow, this is interesting. Ronnie Coleman got a little bit chubby. There isn't a lot of vascularity, as usual, happening on his arms. The gut got a little bit bigger and he is doing some uh, leg work. So I thought it would be interesting to share it with you guys. And you tell me what you think in the comment section down below. Alright, next up we have something a little bit more recent. It's absolutely very much recent. It's just a, a new photo of Ian Valier, who is seven and a half weeks out of... Tampa Pro and he definitely looks like he made some improvements. So this is a bodybuilder that keeps making improvements year after year. I don't think there ever was a year that he looked worse or the same as the year before. So I can definitely see him looking much better at a Tampa Pro. Who is he gonna be facing? Anybody that is there right now that we know is gonna be competing at Tampa is not really a threat to Ian. He has a pretty much safe win unless, unless Rolly Winkler shows up. Hunter may qualify in Chicago. Then we have Ian in Tampa, unless Rolly shows up. How, uh, how dare you not? Look how Rolly fucking Rolly. mad he gets. <laughs> Ian, can you beat Rolly? Yes. If he comes inside out peeled, I probably won't beat him. But if he comes yeah. in at, you know, Typical Roly outside when he looks, you know, 5th, 6th, 7th Olympia placing. Yeah. I think yeah. I can definitely beat him. And I have to say, I agree with Ian. I know the reaction of the other guys was kind of funny and I made it uh, a little bit too harsh on Ian. It does look kind of mean, but really, I agree with him. I can see him beating Roly. Look, guys, I know Roly is definitely one of the most genetically blessed bodybuilders in the history of bodybuilding. 
And he probably fulfilled his maximum potential. I mean, he has so much muscle. It's all bubbly and crazy looking. So yeah, Rolly Winkler is definitely insanely hard to beat by anybody if he is in shape. But this is what he usually brings to the stage. He is usually a little bit off, a little bit soft. Yeah, the photo that he posted on IG yesterday looks absolutely sick. He looks shredded. But that's usually what we see of him in that uh, crazy looking mirror and crazy looking under that crazy looking lighting over there in Kuwait. On the stage, it's usually different. It's usually like this. Let's be honest. On the other hand, Ian is always absolutely peeled. And the only time he wasn't exactly shredded was New York Pro. Other than that, he was always, always shredded. Look at his Mr. Olympia edition. Like This is skinless, basically. No, you won't see Chris Bumstead kind of separations, the depth and everything, but that's something you don't see when somebody is so shredded. But Ian kind of does has that grainy look, and he always gets shredded, like the skin looks super, super thin. And now it seems like he made some progress even. This was posted by his coach, Patrick Tour, and it's crazy to, to, to imagine that he's still growing at this level. So it seems like he grew, he made some improvements, and I know he's gonna be peeled, and it seems like him and Patrick figured it out when it comes to peaking perfectly for the show. They have the formula now, so I can expect crazy conditioning of Ian, and Rolly, he better come in shape, because he might lose. He might lose this show. It's not really... I mean, he has to be the favorite if he does it, but it's gonna be close, and I think Ian has the chance to beat him. Okay, now let's talk Chicago. So, everybody at this point has Hunter Labrada being this show. He has to be the favorite. Since Akim is out doing Puerto Rico and Sergio Oliva is not doing it, we're gonna have Hunter as the favorite. Because he was 8th at the Mr. Olympia, he won a pro show last year, he won Tampa, and he made improvements. As he says right here, he's gonna be 3 to 5 pounds heavier on stage, even though it wasn't the goal in the offseason. He tried to slowly add a little bit of tissue to certain areas and also to keep his waist small, which is very important and it seems like he accomplished that and also he's gonna be heavier so imagine that, that's gonna be a crazy looking package and the thing with Hunter is that he is a, you can say like, he is a bodybuilder's bodybuilder because he has all the muscle that he needs, really, like, he, he he's not lacking anything it's such a right physique, right? arms, shoulders, chest, back, legs, overall legs Maybe the back can be a little bit better, but everything either... Uh, back too, I mean, back is good, everything else is just great. So he is so balanced, such a balanced bodybuilder, and he knows how to bring the shape too. The only guy that is sort of a challenge to him is Charles Griffin, who was, I believe, second at the last Chicago he did. I think it was two years ago, 2019, against Michael Lockett, who won. So he had two years on disposal to make improvements. And he says right here his waist is apparently not sm not big anymore. They used to say that his uh, waist is thick, and I said that before because it is. And now it does look a little bit smaller, but I don't know how much smaller can it be really on stage. That's structure, you can't really change that. You can make your shoulders wider and just gain overall mass, something that Jay Cutler did. But I don't think you can make your waist smaller. Maybe you can uh, suck your stomach in, do vacuums and stuff like that to make it a little bit smaller. But usually when you have a thick waist, you're going to have a thick waist and people will see that. Uh, as far as improvements and Charles Griffin, I think he made his huge arms even huger, bigger. So he definitely did gain some mass over there in that area. Other than that, I don't really see some crazy improvements. The legs are still pretty small compared to his upper body. So I don't really see him as a threat to Hunter, no. Second place? Sure. As we all know at this point, Sergio Oliva is not doing Chicago. He is doing Garnold Classic though. He looks absolutely massive right here. And the new word on the streets is that he is doing Texas Pro. Which seems like it's gonna be a really good show. Now, where did I hear this? Of course, I heard it at Fuad Abiyad's channel. So, guys, make sure to subscribe to his channel and watch his podcast. You're gonna get a lot of news quickly over there because those guys know everything. And I have some, new, some, some more information from those guys that I gathered watching that podcast. And here is Sergio Oliva. He's doing taxes, apparently, and, and Arnold. And he looks great at this point. He looks massive, he looks conditioned, and he's getting better and better. And I can definitely see him winning Texas Pro and placing very high at the Arnolds. Can he win Arnold Classic? I mean, uh, he's not a favorite for sure. It would be a surprise, but I don't think it's impossible. I think it's very possible. I just have to see how much changes 
did he make in the offseason? We'll see, we'll see, but right now he does look absolutely massive. And also he's getting more and more conditioned by the day. Is the last year classic physique, Arnold Classic champion repeating it this year? It seems like it, he's bringing the conditioning. With his small waist, Terence Ruffin, Danny Yunan and the others are gonna have their hands full, so they better come in super on, because this guy, wow, what a classic physique. He won it last year, he may very well win it this year again. If Chris continues to win the Olympia and he, would he ever try and do the Arnold as well at some point? Uh, potentially. I'm trying to convince him to do the Arnold for the men's open. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome. Yeah, I want him to do it with me. One time before he retires, we'll get him to do an Arnold or something like that in the men's open. And now I'm going to... Yeah, that was something very interesting I heard on this podcast too. Chris Bumstead might be, actually for sure will be doing open division at Arnold's one day before he retires. Now, is he going to try to grow into the show, uh, to grow for the show, or just uh, go out the way he looks in classic? Because he did grow a lot since his uh, days in open bodybuilding when he turned pro. He was significantly smaller, but he looked like a good open bodybuilder for sure, with a little bit smaller arms, but... It's nothing a little Sintel can't change. Just kidding, of course, he wouldn't do that. He grew them naturally. I mean, not naturally, naturally, but without sight enhancement oil. So maybe he can keep them growing, I don't know, for a couple of years and then gain a little bit more uh, fullness coming into the show. And I think he, he could do very well. And this is definitely a topic for a separate video that I might very well make. But I wanted to tell you about this, guys, in case you missed it. So... Chris Bumstead is one day gonna do the Open at the Arnold's, and that's gonna be amazing. And as far as Phil Heath being 8 weeks out of a bodybuilding show, we have a rumor about that as well. Take a look at this. I heard Phil Heath might be too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, Phil Heath, is, is Phil Heath coming back? I don't know. Apparently he said posted something saying 8 weeks out. I know. Yeah. Somebody's... Oh, no, there's no... The last person that I spoke to said he was like like substantially lighter than they've ever seen him yeah yeah like, look, yeah like 40 pounds lighter than they've ever seen him is he just trolling everybody you think no i heard he's like like trying I, th this is all hearsay i heard he's trying to get into acting there you go phil he is not eight weeks out of a show but uh movie that he is filming or something like that guys citorino says that he heard he's uh, starting to act, he's gonna try acting, so that's a new information I haven't heard about, and that he is substantially lighter, like 40 pounds lighter than he usually is, so I don't know, I haven't really seen him in person ever, not just now, so I don't know about that, but this is just what I heard, I wanted to share it with you guys, and yeah, I got a lot of information from Fuad's podcast, so thanks Fuad, I'm a huge fan of your channel, I hope you're not mad for this, you better block me if you don't want me to watch those videos anymore or, you know, start working with me or something like that. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.